quello che possiamo vedere in Dolomiti all'inizio della loro lunga storia è Fossil remains of terrestrial organisms witness the beginning of the Dolomites history when alluvial plains were crossed by rivers and lakes con uh, dei fiumi, dei laghi e attorno a questi corsi d'acqua c'erano Most plants growing along the banks were fairly different from the modern ones, but similar ones have survived. Araucaria, for example, still lives in South America and the Far East. Quindi queste piante hanno lasciato i loro resti fossili che vediamo su queste lastre. It is like so that on these rocks we can see a few of these fossil plants. The most famous among those collected in the Gardena Valley is called Ortiseia, after the city of Ortisei. Ed è una conifera primitiva appunto collegata alle... This primitive conifer is linked to the modern Araucaria and its beautiful fossils of branches and cones are exhibited here. I frutti di queste piante. La sedimentazione è però generale di quelle che poi eh, i geologi hanno chiamato The rock forming the unit now called Arenaria di Val Gardena or Gardena Sandstone is mainly made up of sand that accumulated during the Permian period and then hardened. Arenaria non è nient'altro che una sabbia che si è cementata e quindi è diventata dura. Its red color characterizes the equestrian site and comes from grains being eroded from the underlying red porphyry as well as the subaerial deposition environment in warm and dry climate. Molto abbastanza arido e quindi c'è la tendenza ad arrossare un po' queste rocce. Quando le arenarie sono fini ci permettono di conservare ottimamente i resti delle piante e non solo The fine grain sandstones allow the preservation of leaves and wood and sometimes even some cellular structures can be identified. Ma soprattutto, tenendo presente che nei pressi dei corsi d'acqua queste sabbie fini diventavano umide ma compatte, gli animali che vivevano... Fossil footprints are quite commonly found as well. The animals left their traces while wandering near water bodies on fine and compact wet sands, which were covered by new sediments soon after. Su questo sedimento molto fine e umido che poi sono stati ricoperti, abbiamo avuto la diagenesi, quindi... The diagenetic processes then turned sands into rock, preserving traces and fossils throughout time. Tutta questa successione. Le diverse orme ci dicono che c'erano diverse... Based on these traces, we know a great variety of animals lived in this habitat, even though their skeletons are rarely found, as the continental environment is hostile to fossilization. Era favorevole a questa conservazione. Via via, che si procede, si procedeva nel tempo, si andava verso... The following million years, important changes involved this area, and sediments witness the ingression of the sea. These structures, called ripple marks, were made by waves on a shallow sandy sea floor. Di, eh, un metro d'acqua, due metri d'acqua. Dopo questa prima fase in cui After the continental phase with rivers and lakes, the sea appears in the Dolomites history and dominates throughout many million years. Most of the rocks formations that now characterize these mountains are originated in this long period. Il, il mare non arriva improvvisamente, arriva con molta gradualità e lo si può vedere benissimo perché... The ingression of the sea was gradual. A consistent amount of gypsum is evidence of an early hypersaline stage with very shallow waters. Its white layers now make a remarkable contrast with the underlying red sandstones. Fossils are absent because life in this habitat was impossible. Abbiamo pochissimi animali che potevano vivere. In, in questo ambiente, ma poi eh, via via il mare si approfondisce e quindi abbiamo i primi fossili. As water became deeper, animals could find a place to live and thrive. Questi gasteropodi che danno proprio 
il nome a questa formazione a Bellerophon. Among the oldest fossils there are gastropods of the genus Bellerophon, hence the name of this late Permian unit. Sul fondo, assieme ad altri gasteropodi, a dei foraminiferi. These mollusks, equipped with a plenty pair of shell, used to live on the shallow seafloor, together with other gastropods, algae, foraminifers and some brachiopods. Profondo, con abbastanza energia, e comunque un ambiente in cui questi organismi... The funnel assemblages suggest the sea was warm with a shallow bottom, where water had some energy and conditions were certainly good for life. Other organisms dwell in the water column, for example these nautiloids. Che sono parenti stretti in un certo senso del Nautilus. After death, their shell fell on the seabed where some of them became fossil. They are linked to the modern Nautilus, which is called living fossil by paleontologists for its resemblance with the 250 million years old ancestor. Che dopo morti cadevano sul fondo. Nella massa d'acqua c'erano anche dei pesci. Among nectonic animals, there are also few but very important fishes. Ma ne abbiamo alcuni assolutamente interessanti, che sono questo Archeolepidotus. Archeolepidotus leonardi is represented by a unique well-preserved specimen collected in the 1950s. Certainly, tooth plates of Bobastrania are more commonly found. This fish had a high body and fed on small benthic mollusks which it sucked from the seabed and then ground by means of the pharyngeal tooth plates. Questi pesci sono estremamente importanti. All these specimens are extremely important. In particular, this Archeolepidotus leonardi is unique in the Gardena area as it is the only fossil fish whose skeleton is preserved. It was collected in the 1950s by Enrico Moroder, who founded this museum together with other locally well-known personalities devoted to the cultural and naturalistic heritage of this valley. Entriamo nel Triassico. Il Triassico è quindi nel Mesozoico, l'era... We're now approaching the Triassic, the first period of the Mesozoic era, also called the Median Life era. The boundary with the preceding Permian, last period of the Paleozoic era, is probably the most important in the Earth's history. Most paleontologists assert that 252 million years ago, life nearly disappeared from the Earth because of a catastrophic event. Between 90 and 95 percent of all species became extinct and only a few lines of organisms survived. Thus, almost all that we have seen in the Permian showcases disappeared. Il mare è molto più povero, quindi queste ricche associazioni che abbiamo visto Diversity in the sea became much scarcer. The thriving Bellerophon assemblages were replaced by few species counting very high numbers of specimens. Pochi fossili, non come numero di esemplari, ma come numero di specie. Le associazioni sono dominate dai lamelli branchi. Faunal assemblages were dominated by lamelli branch mollusks. Here is the famous Claraia, a genus with many species. These rock slabs contains Claraia clarai, the most beautiful and widespread among the species. In genere, di un'unica specie, che vuol dire che le condizioni al fondo erano abbastanza problematiche. These other slabs highlight how the bulk of specimens belong to a single species. This implies that the seabed habitat was so harsh that very few species could adapt to it, and without having much competitions, they developed large populations. This also means that every slight change in the habitat conditions induces a substitution of the species. It's simple, even if there are some changes in the environment, in the profundity, but we stay always in a mess. In the first few million years of the Triassic, the situation was therefore dominated by scarcely deep seas, with a muddy bottom and low biodiversity. Delle tracce, delle evidenze di vita, no, non troviamo gli organismi che le hanno prodotte, ma troviamo appunto... We also have fossil traces and structures proving the existence and activity of organisms that were not preserved. 
but even in this case that diversity is low, as only a few kinds of tracks and bars can be found. Particularmente ricco di forme di vita. After the first Triassic marine ingression, the entire alpine area rises and emerges once again. An immersion implies erosion. The outcome are these reddish conglomerates, called Richthofen conglomerates. A new gradual marine ingression follows, involving not only the Dolomites, but the southern calcareous Alps all the way to Lombardy. Poco profondo, e questo avviene non soltanto su tutte le Dolomiti, ma su tutte le Alpi Calcare, quindi fino. Here in the Dolomites, the resulting unit is the Contrin formation, deposited on a wide, uniform carbonate platform where water was only one to three meters deep. In pratica, con uno, due, tre metri d'acqua al massimo, molto uniforme. Extensive prairies of calcareous algae produced large amounts of calcium carbonate that, after sedimentation, was often replaced by dolomite, a calcium magnesium carbonate. Carbonato di calcio che poi localmente viene trasformato in dolomiti. Dopo questa fase di grande uniformità avviene qualche cosa di estremamente importante. Soon after, the short and stable period comes to an end, and this is a crucial event in the Dolomites history. For the first time in the Triassic, two different marine environments are established. The atolls, with their carbonate platform, are now surrounded by deep sea basins. Waters on the atolls were shallow and their sediments made up of carbonate massives that characterize the Dolomites nowadays. Le Dolomiti, le vere Dolomiti, in mezzo abbiamo invece dei bacini profondi anche 500. In between the isles, basins were up to several hundred meters deep and their sediments were very different. Dark well bedded limestones have formed there, like those of the Buchsestein formation, well visible on the Seceda summit. Oxygen was almost absent from the very deep bottom, giving this rock the black color and allowing the remnants of some organisms like fishes to be preserved. Si potevano conservare questi tipi di organismi, ma in questa unità certamente il fossile più famoso è il famoso Ichthyosaurus del Seceda. Here we can see all the collected bones. This was a large animal that could potentially measure 5 meters in length. Della parete della formazione di Buchenstein e qui abbiamo We can also see that the vertebrae are considerably flattened. 50 anni fa molto schiacciato, era un, un grosso animale, un grosso rettile marino, probabilmente lungo. Beside fish and the ichthyosaur, the superficial waters were dwelled by ammonoids, whose fossils are commonly found, and they're considered as guide fossils throughout the Triassic. In other words, they allowed to set a date for the rocks where they were collected. L'ultima grande piana di marea del Triassico, delle Dolomiti, possiamo dire. La fine della storia del Triassico è... Here is the result of the last ancient tidal flood of the Triassic in the Dolomites area, the Dolomia Principale, literally the main Dolostone. As much as in the entire calcareous Alps, here the final history of the Triassic is almost uneventful. This huge tidal flat was an exceptionally wide and very shallow sea, in a hot and arid climate. This heated up the water and increased its salinity, making life very difficult. The Dolomia Principale frequently shows structures called stromatolites, originated by blue-green algae called cyanobacteria, which are among the oldest known organisms. Appearing as plano parallel wave laminations, the ancient stromatolites consist of the sediments once trapped by the algal film, which could not be preserved. 
che sono legate appunto alla presenza di questi. Today, these algae and their peculiar structures only grow in a few places: the Bahamas Islands, the Inner Persian Gulf and Shark Bay in Australia. I fossili che troviamo in questo ambiente sono, abbiamo detto, This formation can be up to 1 km thick and yet its fossils are scarce due to the original harsh platform environment. When present, they're normally gathered in beds. These large lamellibranch bivalves, called megalodons, are predominant here, but their shell is rarely preserved. We can often observe internal and external molds separated by a void that formed in place of the dissolved shell. The internal mold consists of sediments filling the shell, while the external one is the outer form of the shell printed in the surrounding sediments. Dissolution is a consequence of dolomitization, the process which transformed the original calcareous rock into dolomite. So if we remove the internal model, poi abbiamo comunque l'impronta dell'aspetto esterno, ma normalmente troviamo questi nuclei di... Eh, the same process could also be responsible for the destruction of smaller organisms, accounting for the fossil sparsity throughout the unit. Gli organismi più piccoli, i resti di organismi più piccoli. While the bulk of the rocks making up the Dolomites dates back to the Triassic, their sedimentary history continues throughout the Jurassic and up to the Cretaceous. Since younger formations overlaid the older ones, when this era began to rise under the pressure of the orogenetic forces, the more recent rocks were the first to emerge from the sea and to be eroded. The result can be seen on these mountains, most is Triassic, little Jurassic and very little Cretaceous. Although dainty, the Cretaceous of the Dolomites is very interesting for the peculiar ammonites it contains. Dei fossili perché come possiamo vedere in questa vetrina abbiamo delle ammoniti molto interessanti, delle ammoniti che sono un po' diverse da quelle. Well, these in both the Triassic and Jurassic were represented by simple plainly spiral forms. In the Cretaceous, their shell could be more complex as we see in this showcase. They are called ethermorph ammonites, and though not exclusive, they are certainly typical of this time period. The fauna collected on Pitts Puets, in particular, is very rarely found elsewhere in Italy. Besides being beautiful and often well preserved, the specimens can reach one meter in diameter. Vivevano in un mare verosimilmente poco profondo perché gli specialisti dicono che con queste forme non Specialists believe their morphology was not optimal for swimming. Thus they probably dwell in the water column close to the seabed. E con questi fossili praticamente si chiude la storia. Here the sedimentary history of the Dolomites comes to an end. Much later, around 100 million years ago, their tectonic history began. In other words, the long and extremely complicated process leading a seabed to become the marvelous mountains that surround us today.